Here we have Ninja Gaiden 2 for the NES. Remember when I said back in my review of the first Ninja Gaiden game that it was hard to beat? Well, I'm not kidding. This game has certain stages that will make you go crazy and the enemies are insane, popping up in the most unusual places. This game is once again created by Tecmo in 1990, one year after a best-selling original during its time. The story takes place one year after the fateful battle with Jaquio. A new enemy named Ashtar, who is supposedly Jaquio's master, begins to stir up things by kidnapping Irene, Ryu's girlfriend, and former CIA agent. Ashtar's plan is to use the Dark Sword of Chaos, which he possesses, and use Irene as a sacrifice in order to open the Gate of Darkness that will unleash hordes of monsters and put the world into eternal darkness. It's kinda similar to what Jaquio did in the first game with the demon statues. While Ryu is trying to rescue Irene from Ashtar. Along the way, he gets assistance from a special agent named Robert T.S. Who in the process, is trying to retrieve the Dark Sword from Ashtar. Surprisingly, this is one of the first set of video games to actually show blood. When the trilogy came out for Super Nintendo, Ninja Gaiden 2 was depicted as one of the most censored games out of the three and change the color of certain blood scenes from red to green. The gameplay is still similar to the first game, but with better additions. You know how annoying that wall to wall climb thing was in the first game? Well not anymore. When you cling to the wall, you can actually climb up or down, and it doesn't matter if there's any railings or not. Ryu also gets more interesting power ups, like the orange shadow clone versions of himself, which you can have up to two, which you will need to take out some enemies and definitely the bosses, as well as getting out of certain situations. If you can master the positioning of your clones at just the right times of taking out enemies or bosses, you officially rule at this game. The backgrounds are still ever changing, but some areas will drive you nuts. The game starts to really get hard at stage 2 too, where you're in the mountains and there's snow constantly falling. What's really annoying in this part of the game is that the wind is blowing the snow at left and right diagonal angles that will either push or pull you away. This can really suck when you're trying to make leaps over cliffs and the wind pushes you towards the enemies and likely end up getting hit every time which is just not right. At stage 3-1, things start to get really hectic when basically the whole damn stage is black as hell and the only way you can see your footing is when the lightning flashes. I find that at stage 3-2 is where you'll die the most, more than even the last stage of the game because of the enemies, the ledges, just about everything in this game of the stage combined will make you go SHIT! And if you manage to get through the stage, you still have to go through areas of water, fire, ice, and even spikes. And I'm like, damn, could they make this game any harder than it already is? Well, they did. And this is where the enemies come in. The fucking birds make a comeback in this game and are just as annoying as in the first game, but the only difference is that they only do one damage instead of three to your health. In some stages, they appear as bad, but there really is no other difference. Unfortunately, they're not the only annoying enemies you have to deal with. Here we have these guys who can jump over you and throw swords from above, and 90% of the time you will get hit by them. The flames are also annoying, and although you can destroy them, if they appear in numbers and surround you without any warning possible, you're pretty much screwed. Finally we have Mouth? The fifth boss of the first game is now a common enemy? Well, if you get hit by his attacks, he will deal major damage to you. But if you dodge it and then attack him afterwards, it only takes 3 to 4 hits to take him out. The boss battles vary depending on who you fight and how many shadow clones you have. The second boss will definitely give you a hard time because you have to deal with his spiders and the weather at the same time. If you lose to the fourth boss, you truly suck at this game because all you have to do is dodge his claw attacks and they're very easy to anticipate, giving you just the right amount of time to deal major damage before the other claw comes at you.
Then we have the fight against the bastard Dark Lord himself. Ashtar likes to be a cheap ass and teleport constantly around the room calling forth and dishing out flames at you. There are chances where you will most likely get hit by the flames when they start to surround him. Your best chance at Ashtar is to have at least one shadow clone and the flame item, thus taking out his flames and dealing damage to him before he teleports again. When you finally manage to beat Ashtar, you think you'll get the ending, but just realize you have two more stages to go. You later find out that an old enemy awaits for you, and you'll have to defeat him as well. Well, despite being a frustrating hell of a game to beat, it's still playable. You just gotta play the same damn levels over and over again using the right special items and always have those clones with you at all times. This game is an 8.5 out of 10 only because of its really hard difficulty. I suggest if you haven't played this game before, go for it because unlike some other NES games, you do get well rewarded with a great ending. And now I leave the end of the review to Robert. Take care.